Hi folks, Technivorous here. Welcome to my Kira playlist. Before we get started, hit that subscribe button so you can find your way back here. I update often. That said, as you may have noticed, Kira settings can be very simple or very in-depth. So I took the time to make a video about each section in the custom settings menu, and I'm going to quickly go over the important settings each section contains and briefly explain them. Are you ready? Good. Let's go. This is Kira settings in five minutes or less. Now before we get going here, it's important to note that I am using the latest version of Kira. This is actually a beta. This is version 4.5. By the time these videos are released, 4.5 will be the latest official release. So you should have all the things that I have if you are using the newest version. If you do not see something in the menu here that is available on my menu on screen, go ahead and click on the cog wheel and check to make sure that the box is checked in this area here. Now you don't need all of these turned on all the time. I turn them on and off depending on what I'm doing and what I'm using because using all of them at the same time as you can see can lead to quite a cluttered workspace but this video is going to be about quality and one of the first things we're going to go over in quality is the layer height as I said we will do individual in-depth videos on each of these topics later but right now I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of the purpose of each of these items and the layer height is pretty self-explanatory it is the height of a layer, which is basically saying that when your slicer slices the model into individual layers to slice into individual lines to turn into G-code, each of those layers optimally will end up at the height set in your layer height. Now, there are some exceptions to this rule, such as the second option under quality, initial layer height. Sometimes adding a little bit more or a little bit less layer height to the first layer can increase stability and also help with bed adhesion. It's not necessary in a lot of cases, but it is a handy feature to have. Another feature that is exactly what it sounds like it is, is line width. That's how wide your line will be optimally when printing a single line onto the bed. Should be something close to your nozzle size, and definitely not smaller, although slightly larger than your nozzle size is generally okay because you can extrude a little bit more filament and the slicer is more than capable of doing that. These other settings are indented because they are to do with the line width. That's the way that it works. Uh, you can see a good example of that here by seeing these settings are indented under wall line width and this is the line width of walls which are basically perimeters, the outer parts of the object. So. Um, these settings are not necessary for printing with. Basically, you just leave them alone. They'll get set automatically based on what you put in here. And in fact, the only one I change often is the layer height. Initial layer line width is similar to initial layer height. It will give you a different width on the first layer. Adding to it, again, can sometimes increase adhesion, but it is strictly not a necessary thing in most cases. That's going to be it for going over quality. Stay tuned for the next video. We'll be going over the shell settings. And in future videos, we will be going in-depth more into these individual settings and doing some testing and adjusting to see exactly what they do. Another fun thing to note before we leave is that if you hover over a setting, Kira does do a very nice job of telling you a lot about that setting. So here you have a pop-up menu that tells you the height of each layer in millimeters. Higher values produce faster prints and lower resolution. Lower values produce slower prints and higher resolution. So that's very plain in the way that it's stated and eloquent and nice. It also tells you the things that it affects. So if you change the layer height, it's going to affect all of these bulleted points from the top bottom thickness to the raft middle thickness all the way down there at the bottom and everything in between. So something to keep in mind. But in most cases, as I said, you're not going to be messing with most of those settings. You're going to let the computer do it for you. And it does a fairly good job of figuring that out for itself. As always, this channel is brought to you by these fine Patreon supporters. If you'd like to support the channel on Patreon, head over to www.patreon.com slash technivorous. That's going to be it for this video. As always, I am Technivorous, and thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out our main channel page where we do a free giveaway for our subscribers every month. So far, we've given away things like a Capricorn PTFE tubing kit and spools of filament. So the giveaway videos are always pinned to our main channel page. So all you have to do is subscribe and leave a comment on the giveaway video for the current contest. 
Feel free to check out this video right here. YouTube picked it for my content just for you. And if you haven't already, you can hit the subscribe button right here. So what are you waiting for? Become a technivore now. Thanks again. Technivorous out.